All right, malicious, malicious people, welcome to the video. And I hope you enjoy your stay and learn some things about the seven best incarnate weapons for your rally. This, as well, is a list, which means it's technically completely subjective. But it's subjective to what I like to call the three criteria for a weapon that's built for your rally. Essentially, first criteria is this. Can it benefit from her uh, passive ability, which is 200% modded crit chance on your weapon as soon as you stay moving for at least one second? Another one is this. Does it have the capacity to take out acolytes? But I will also be doing something completely different as well, which is I'm not going to be doing my main Yorelli. I'm going to be using this Yorelli, who should be on the screen right now with her build. Essentially, this is a ability-based Yorelli, so she's not exactly fully mid-maxed for using uh, weapons, but she is actually meant for abilities. Plus, she only has one blue Archon Shard for armor, and the reason for that is that it affects Maraluna. At the end, I'll show you mine, but I will recommend this. Either three blue Archon Shards to be absolutely tanky to a point where it goes to a bit of a soft cap, or you go and you do this thing where you go and put two orange ones and two green ones, which is very, very mwah, chef's kiss down below <laughs> oh and we're also going to be going through this uh alphabetically starting with the weapon in my hands the atomos is a very interesting weapon essentially it has a very cool thing where it's a beam weapon and an explosive the cool thing about that is we're going to be using flare to increase the power of the heat rocks and because heat procs are, are uh, governed by the very first heat proc that hits, Flare is going to allow us to have a really high level heat proc. And it's also going to have this thing where it's going to be able to take out Acolytes. The reason why beam weapons are not very good against Acolytes is because of how fast they fire. And the fact that because they fire so fast, they build up the Acolytes adaptation to your damage. So what you're going to want to do is hit it with a big giant boom. A big giant boom, which is capable of hitting them so hard that sometimes you don't even know where they went. They went flying. And you want to see evidence of that? Well, here you go. Here's an acolyte. The raid is off to a successful start. All right, well, isn't that an explosive interaction? Speaking of explosive interactions, we got more explosions for you. Speaking of the dread, or is it despair? Oh yeah, sorry, it's the despair. Oh man, I hate it. <laughs> oh man, I didn't mean to uh, start a pun war. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, anyway, so essentially the dread is, oh, dread, fuck. Despair is a very interesting weapon where it's hard to get it to where it's going to be maxed out for its uh, incarnate form, but you don't need to. Essentially, you get halfway and you should be fine because of the fact that the incarnate form just does that much damage. It also is a very interesting situation where with your ready's passive, she has the power to make it red crit. Which is, this is the only one that can do that, and imagine if you were to have a fully maxed out Yorelli. One that I will be showing you at the very end to basically show that Yorelli can be really, really powerful if you were to put enough effort into her. Speak, keep in mind that I will be showing you the build, but I will be saving the gameplay for my streams. Join me there if you really want to see that. Speaking of seeing things, why not you see what this dread can fuck despair can do to monsters? Damn. I'm gonna have to work on that. Cool. 
Oh man, don't you just fucking hate being unable to speak? It may cause a pun war. I don't want to get memed on. I dread it. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was the despair. I didn't mean to get too far into the memes, but, you know, there we go. Um, speaking of memes, why don't we check out another piece of equipment that used to be really, really bad, but now is one of, if not the most powerful incarnates in the entire game. That being the Dual Toxicist. Dual Toxicist, yes. And with Urelli, yes. The Dual Toxicist. One of the greatest weapons in the game. Specifically, if you were to be self galvanizing with a Urelli, or if you're going to be using two orange, no, green Archon shards in order to be capable of armor stripping. If you are able to armor strip, Oh, God help any enemy who decides that they want to fuck with you. Because, yes, you will be armor stripping them without needing to use an ability. You will also be using secondary encumber with this build. And specifically making it to where you can do 13 times the damage with damage uh, uh, CO, gun CO. Essentially, uh, status... Galvanized status! There we go. Galvanized status. Sorry. But essentially, um, Galvanized status will have 40% 40 40 increase in damage per status type, stacking to three times, but you can get 13 statuses in total. That basically is a very large amount of damage. Plus, the dual toxicists also have a very decent amount of damage at base, keeping in mind that no matter how high a multiplier is, it will not be very good if the number that they're multiplying is like 12 or something. Looking at you, Oxani. But, uh, speaking of what this weapon can do besides other weapons, let's see what it can do to an Acolyte. Oh my god, that guy just like... Yes, Swiss cheese. I don't like Swiss cheese, by the way. I like, I prefer American. Speaking of some of the most American shit you've ever seen, do you like flamethrowers? That is going to be the Furious Incarnate. Oh, man. This one's kind of hilarious. Also, SMG Gober? Uh, machine pistol. Machine pistol, yes. Burr. The Ferris Incarnate is a very uh, cool weapon. Essentially, it's a uh, pew pew that turns into a fucking brah, firing your lasers kind of thing. Essentially, it is a flamethrower, which is essentially a beam weapon, but the beam has the damage being technically really wide. But the kill box, or where the projectile dies, is very small. This means that Malice, no, not Malice. His name is uh, Mania. Mania, the guy who just happens to have Zephyr's torn uh, shield, will not be able to deflect your projectile because the projectile's hitbox goes further than his uh, shield is, allowing you to hit him anyway. This is pretty good, and keep in mind that most beam weapons are not good against Acolytes at all. This is really good specifically because it has high enough damage to just lay into him until he dies. Which is very important when you take into consideration that it also has a lot of ammo. And you will be using an entire clip on this guy. But it's here because of the fact that it's really, really good and really, really easy. Essentially, point and shoot and hold down the button, increase the incarnate and lay into a group of enemies. Especially if you were to use a Nautilus or something. Allowing you to group everybody in constantly because you're also going to be using uh, Sector Encumber with this. The reason why is because flamethrowers technically count as beam weapons. It's not an actual AoE, so it actually does affect the flamethrower. You can see this in the uh, 
uh, Ignis race. So, what can it do to Andalites? Well, let me show you that. Toasty! Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna be going to these puns very, very nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So, what's the next weapon? Well, that's uh, very interesting because it's actually another throwing weapon, the kunai. Why is it another throwing weapon? Because watch this. Essentially, it's very, very interesting. Essentially, the kunai has a really interesting situation where. It, it turns into two homing uh, shotgun blasts. Uh, I mean, it turns into a shotgun blast of two kunai, which are affected by multi shot, meaning you'll be able to throw a lot of these things. Keep in mind that the highest um, crit, uh, the highest like uh, uh, amounts of uh, bullets you can fly in secondaries is four, but there's two of these at base, which means you'll be flying eight of them. Uh, if you were to roll the the eighth shot, but essentially it hits the head all the time if you aim slightly above the head, because it's these heat-seeking daggers that will be able to go down and hit them in the dome. The thing is, when you hit them and they uh, stagger, you're gonna want to fire slightly to the left side or your left specifically, because they're gonna be flinching towards the right. So essentially, you'll be able to sneak in a left hook into their face. Speaking of which, uh, you know, what does this do against Zacolytes? Oh, you're gonna enjoy this one. Well, there we go. We have a pin cushion for a head. And that's, uh, that's gonna be going on my wall. <laughs> I'm so rigged dip with it. Anyway, uh, yeah, there we go. The next weapon is going to be quite fun. Essentially, it is going to be a big, giant slug that just smacks into a bitch. Being the Lex Prime. The Lex Prime is very good. The Lex Incarnate is going to be very interesting. The Lex Prime specifically. Because essentially, it's going to be using Hemorrhage. The reason why is because it almost guarantees... Slash rocks. The reason why for that is because it guarantees impact rocks. And because it has a high amount of multi shot in this build, essentially it's going to be slashing these guys so often that we are going to be using viral. But the reason why we're using viral and not corrosive is actually quite interesting. Even though acolytes are weak to corrosive, they have this situation where it does not matter. This weapon just does too much damage. It does so much damage that there is a little bit of an issue. In order to get incarnate, you have to hit the head, but it always one-shots. It hit one-shots so often with your rally that there's a chance that you might be sitting there, shooting at heads, killing one person at a time, to a point where it's going to take you a while to actually get your incarnate out. But when you do, Ooh, just look at this acolyte. Oh, boob shakalaka. Oh, I love that one. So, that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty good, isn't it? Speaking of surprisingly good, once you get the incarnate form of this weapon, surprisingly good. The Prisma Angstrom. The Prisma Angstrom is a very interesting situation of a weapon. Essentially, it's a AOE weapon. This means that you have to hit directly with the shot in order to get yourself some Incarnate. This is really good. It gets your Incarnate really quickly. The one thing is that it also goes through um, Incarnate very, very fast. Essentially, it fires pew, 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 and really really fast. I mean, wow. To a point where it, um, it's so high in speed that it does not actually matter the fact that damage alteration takes into consideration fire rate. And 
Yeah, that's actually pretty good. So the little fireballs also have no sound, which is very concerning? Because sometimes I don't even know if I'm firing the weapon. It's <laughs> it's funny. But, uh, hey, if you don't want to hit the head with a really slow dual toxicist, uh, and, you want to, and you're okay with changing in the damage for uh, the convenience of getting your incarnate really quickly, you actually could do this to an acolyte. Well, he's on fire! That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, and speaking of on fire, I am going to be putting out this dumpster fire of a pun wars. Yes, we're going, we're mentioning old puns. Anyway, sorry. But essentially, um, that was the final weapon, and I hope you enjoyed it. Plus, here is the build that I promised you for that your rally. Essentially, as you can see, there's going to be Talforge Archon Shards, but you don't need Talforge Archon Shards. The only one you kind of sort of do need because of how armor works is probably a Talforge Blue. Talforge Blue isn't too impossible to get a hold of, and you only need one, really. And like I showed with this uh, other Yorelli, she essentially does only need just one. Because, you know, Maraluna is a, herself is slightly squishy, but also does not take mods, which is very unfortunate. So essentially you cannot raise her armor. But this specific one is completely mid-maxed over the course of actually two and a half years. I am still working on this already, mid-maxing everything. And yeah, it's uh, very interesting. And if you would like to see some gameplay of this Yoreni, like I said, join me on either Twitch, on Gina Mimara, or YouTube every single Thursday, Friday, weekends, and Wednesday, of course. But, yeah. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Have wonderful, wonderful nightmares. I will see you in them. And remember, if you're watching my content, I know you're into it. Honey, honey. Mm -hmm. Also, this was unscripted, and I hope I did well. Good night.